Let's talk about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. That's right. No more excuses. Get your lazy ass off the couch. Go start a podcast. There's the creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Once again, no more excuses. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Could it be easier? Even better, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. That's right. They're paying us for this ad. Thank you very much, Anchor. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started now. This is The Dime, a 10-minute dive into the cannabis and hemp industry through trends, insights, predictions, and tangents. What's up, guys? This is The Dime. As always, this gives you the business and science perspectives of everything cannabis in today's market. Today, we're talking about chirp time. As of 2020, there have been over 100 cannabis-derived terpenes identified in published journals. There's a race against time for leading and emerging brands to identify combinations of terpenes that can lead them to greater levels of success. While terpenes are often used to market differentiate strains of cannabis and they continue to be studied and examined, many consumers are left in the dark about exactly what terpenes are. Kellen, in the simplest of, of forms, what are terpenes and how does it influence cannabis? Terpenes are the building blocks of cannabinoids. All right, so technically THC is a terpene. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. It's a sesquiterpene, right? The terpenes that we're referring to now are like monoterpenes. So they're just smaller uh, versions of cannabinoids, I guess, for lack of a better description. Um, how they affect the cannabis is this is where different strains come in, right? So different combinations of the strains uh, result in, or different combinations of the terpenes result in different strains. Indicas tend to have higher concentrations of like linalu, and linalu is a terpene that uh, is known to cause relaxing uh, effects from an aromatic perspective. It's the um, active terpene in lavender, right? So anyone out there who's a big aromatherapy person who goes out and is looking to relax and buys some lavender bath soap or whatnot is the active chemical that's causing them to relax is linalu versus sativas tend to be more myrcene dominant and myrcene is more uplifting if you will is what they say so the terpenes tend to dictate the effect of the cannabis if you will from uh, uplifting versus like a sleepy time kind of cannabis right and this is where the whole entourage effect has come into play from a cannabis perspective as far as terpenes go i mean what is your understanding of terpenes from a non-scientific perspective brian i know it's a hot word in the space right now Pretty minimal, actually. My favorite aspect of the terpenes is when they're on display and I get to smell them all and go, oh, I, I know what this one smells like, or I've definitely had this one before. But it begs to differ when I'm at a dispensary and I'm selecting a strain and in, in olden life when you used to get to smell the, the flower, what you're smelling, right, Kellen, is the terpenes. And when they're listing the components below, for the most part, I don't recall them listing specific terpenes. It was more THC, CBD, and like the name of the, the strain. And I, I want to kind of it's raise hard. that question, right, on, on why are they not listing the terpenes? It's hard, right? I, I tried it, right? Like, I went through a bunch of different iterations with, like, our design team when I was at uh, LeafWorks. And realistically, I mean, just like you said earlier, there's over 100 that have been identified Typically, what makes a strain unique could be a unique combination of 60 or so. So then you're trying to communicate to the consumer different levels of 60 different chemicals, right? And like, how do you display that on a three by three label, right? Like with, without taking away from your brand, with also communicating a certain aspect. So we tried to highlight maybe like five or six that we thought were important it's still, it just became really, really challenging to educate consumers, if you will, through our labels while making it still a clean and attractive looking product from the mat for the masses, right? Like when you get a label that's just like super crowded and trying to like ob abide by all of the state regulatory logos that have to go on there and all these other things, it just gets so crowded and, and it's really, really hard to communicate that information 
to the consumer versus like potency that is required by the state. So those labels are printed off and like literally are part of the certification aspect of the product. So it's just really, really hard to, and I haven't, I've seen maybe a couple different variations where individuals have used like pamphlets, if you will. So like you get your product and you pull out a little piece of paper, but like the open rate, if you will, of that piece of paper cannot be high, <laughs> right? I mean, how would you, from a marketing perspective, how, how would you try to market something as challenging as that? Because there is a bunch of different chemicals that you're trying to communicate to the consumer that are present. You can't. You can't. It's, it's such an overwhelming customer experience walking into the dispensary with you in Seattle and seeing maybe no less than 250 different strains of, of cannabis on the wall. I was like a shell shock. I didn't know what to do. And the service guy comes over and he's like, do you want to smell one of these? And I was like, I don't even know where to start. So I just kind of took a hard left and grabbed some of the edibles, which were way less selections. It's the the overwhelming Trader Joe's selection of choice paradox. I, I don't know the exact name, but like the less is more in that, that concept. And having all those different strains with all the different potency levels and all the different aggressive names with the terpenes is just an overload of information. And there has to be a better way of, of transferring the, the knowledge and educating the users on, on how to select certain terpenes. So from a rough number standpoint, Kellen, potency, terpenes, other characteristics, break it down for someone who's walking to a dispensary that wants to understand if they were going to start the journey of understanding which aspects influence which strains they like the most. Give them a rough understanding from a numerical sense on how you would just estimate the, the differences. To be continued.